remember Joe's background of how many things he actually did before he wound up serving us in the second congressional district. Um, we, um, and not forgetting his roots, he was willing to join us on a down ballot day this last weekend for the C regions and really help plug the importance of these down ballot races and what they did. And after that period of time, he headed up the largest consumer protection agency in the state of Colorado as an appointee of the governor. And Dora, as sometimes we know it, um, is one of the most complicated, large regulatory agencies we have, but its entire mission is consumer protection. And Joe had already been at the head of that before he was ever running for Congress. And I could just say as a legislator at the time, it really made a difference having Joe at the top on how responsive he was and how mission oriented he has always been really for consumers there. So it really isn't a surprise, you know, that when he got elected in 2018, it took about two minutes before Joe was recognized for his leadership uh, on a first ever co-freshman leadership position and has gone on to be an ambassador a liaison of sorts for new members coming into Congress. And these new members have changed Congress already for the good. Um, and so Colorado has been well represented in terms of making sure that we've not just got those of those of you who live in the second congressional district, but really for all of us in Colorado and representing the country as we go through. Um, the Judiciary Committee, you may remember, at very somber times, but throughout the whole impeachment, we had really important leadership by Congressman Goose through that period of time. The Judiciary Committee has tackled some of the toughest and most compelling issues that we have needed to take, and now we just need to get them a Senate majority so their, their stuff can pass. Um, important for Colorado, he's been on the Natural Resources Committee and also on a select committee on climate crisis. And so, like, we still realize the importance of this. Congressman Nagoose still realizes the importance of this. We just need to upgrade a few other people at the national level to make sure they do. So, um, after reintroducing our Congressman Joe Nagoose, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him um, address us this morning. Congressman. Well, good morning. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Thank you, Morgan, for that very, very warm introduction. You were far too kind. My real claim to fame was uh, working in the state legislature 15 years ago when uh, Morgan was a state representative, and I was happy to help the, the House caucus uh, get coffee for all of the state representatives and um, you know do, do was just thrilled to be there and be a part of uh, that history making majority so in any event it's been great to uh, to get to know so many people on today's uh, call of course and and morgan in particular uh, my buddy ed Promutter was texting during that introduction saying that the real lesson is that i couldn't hold a job given what uh, morgan has described of all the different positions that i felt so uh good to know that i've got friends in high places like my friend uh, ed Promutter. Um, it's great to see you all. And I wish that, you know, of course, we were together in person, um, but nonetheless, great to be able to see you all virtually. And I got to say, I, I'm with Morgan on this one. I, I was uh, skeptical. My wife and I were both pretty skeptical last night about the convention, you know, kind of uh, nervous as to how it would unfold. And it was pretty incredible in my view. And the, I, I certainly, as Morgan said, I needed that. Uh, the speeches uh, from a, a number of different people, but in particular, I thought, Senator Sanders' speech was, I think, will probably go down, at least in modern, uh, you know, party convention history, as uh, one of the strongest unifying speeches by a former primary opponent. Um, I think if you go back to conventions over the course of the last 30, 40 years, you, it's just, it's, and I think most analysts are uh, uh, opining that that is the case. And then, of course, Michelle Obama's speech with, you know, it is what it is has become my new catchphrase, as I suspect it is for many of you. And what a great way to encapsulate the last four years of the Trump uh, administration. So I, I also just thought her, you know, and I, I'm curious to get the analysis from all of you about the speeches, but I thought her uh, commentary in really expounding upon the, if, you know, when we go, when they go low, we go high and explaining that that does not mean that we're not willing to call out the nonsense when we see it uh, in a very strong and vociferous way. To me, 
was, again, I think the antidote to so much of what is ailing us right now. So I'm excited. I, I was pretty, you know, uh, uh, jazz before yesterday, obviously, because as Morgan said, being on the front row, uh, having a front row seat on the Judiciary Committee to all of the ills of this administration and realizing that we desperately need a new president and a new Senate, I, you know, was already convinced that I was going to do everything I could to, to make that a, a, a you know, a reality. But uh, it's clear now after hearing those speeches last night that that's even more the case. So looking forward to today, of course, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you, because I know, you know, you all have a number of other commitments, jobs, families, right? A lot of different um, uh, different uh, things that, uh, you know, commitments that you all have in your daily lives. And yet you've shown a willingness and a commitment to be able to serve our state, right? Which, I mean, really the positions that you have as delegates to the convention, I think of them as a service. I mean, you're serving your party, you're serving your community, and ultimately you're serving your state as be being a, a real active participant in our democracy. So it matters. And I'm grateful for the sacrifice you all are making to stare at, you know, your phone or your laptop for eight hours a day uh, and participate in these Zooms and offer your commentary and represent Colorado well, which I know each and every one of you are doing. So uh, again, thanks so much for participating. Excited about the next, well, the next 72 hours, but then after that, of course, excited about the next uh, two and a half months. Uh, we've got to make sure we pull this off. I'm all in. I know you all are too. Let's go do it. So thanks everybody. Congressman, <laughs> real claps. Yay. Um, right. Like I just have found the last four years to be totally traumatic. And, um, the things that give me comfort are knowing that you and Ed and our team are there uh, looking out for us. And um, yeah, I definitely needed that last night. Um, we actually um, may have, let's see, is Secretary Griswold on yet? Not yet. Um Okay. Our congressman finished a bit early. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm curious to hear from you guys. I think you can all unmute yourself. Like, who is your, who is the best speaker for you last night or the best part? Michelle uh, Obama. 